the grandson was to become the object of yet greater affection to his grandfather. His mother, Amina, took him to Medina in order to make him familiar with his uncles, the Banu al-Najjar. She took with her on that trip Um Amin, the servant left behind by her husband Abdullah. In Medina, Amina must have shown her little boy the house where his father died as well as the grave where he was buried. It was then that the boy must have first learned what it means to be an orphan. His mother must have talked much to him about his beloved father who had left her a few days after their marriage and who had met his death among his uncles in Medina. After his emigration to that city, the prophet used to tell his companions about this first trip to Medina in his mother's company. The traditions have preserved for us a number of sayings, which could have come only from a man full of love for Medina and full of grief for the loss of those who were buried in its graves. After a stay of a month in Yathrib, Amina prepared to return to Makkah with her son and set out on the same two camels, which carried them thither. On the road, at the village of Abwa, a village located between Medina and Jaffa, 23 miles south of Medina, Amina became ill, died, and was buried. It was Amaman that brought the lonely and bereaved child to Makkah, henceforth doubly confirmed in orphanhood. A few days earlier, he must have shared his mother's grief as she told him of her bereavement while he was yet unborn. Now he was to see with his own eyes the loss of his mother and add to his experience of shared grief that of a grief henceforth to be borne by him alone.